my body is ready. Hey guys, so today let's talk about injuries. This is the story of how I got the scar on my chest. So I'm sure we all have stupid stories about how we've hurt ourselves in the past before. I definitely have a bunch. Hey Chris, what did that one label say? Hey, don't worry about it. So I've got a scar on the upper right side of my chest. It's kind of like Zoro's from One Piece, but a lot less cooler with a dumber backstory. When I first got this enormous cut, it actually went from the middle of my chest to basically the start of my armpit. But the thing is, there isn't much scar tissue and most of the cut has actually healed. So if we ever meet in real life, it's gonna look like a cat scratch, unfortunately. So let's set the stage for how this happened. So this was about one or two summers ago, and my family decided to throw together a summer barbecue. And since the only kids there were toddlers, I decided to invite my own friends, so I wouldn't get bored, or eaten alive, because toddlers are demons. So I called in the squad. Go, go, have a ranger. Yeah, I just texted them. It looked like this. <laughs> So eventually when they met up with me at the park, we did pretty typical park stuff. We got our barbecue, chatted amongst my family, and then my dad would ask Kelly if he plays basketball because he's really tall, then Kelly would be like, no, but yeah. So eventually after resting our food and just chatting, we decided to play some games. Initially we had a frisbee, but... But we did have a badminton set. Then that failed too, because we smashed the racket and accidentally killed the birdie. Kill me! So as we were taking down the badminton nets, we noticed something. The poles holding up the nets could actually be used as play weapons. So do you remember those cardboard tubes you would get after you finished like a package of wrapping paper for gifts? That's what it felt like. With two key differences. So before with the cardboard, if you hit somebody, it'd be all good and everyone would just laugh. But with the vulcanized hard plastic, you could probably send someone to the hospital. Which we almost did! And the second thing is these things were made to be dug into the ground. So these things were sharp. They weren't rounded for your protection, they were made to stab things. Stabbily. So after putting away the nets, we took all the badminton poles and we put them into a pile. We just looked at each other and then this. This song is copyrighted. <laughs> but they weren't just swords because you could attach them together like markers and then they would be... <laughs> but here's the last thing that we discovered. If you attach two poles together from the top to the bottom and you swung it as hard as you could, this thing would fly. I'm talking like 100 to 200 meters in distance. So if you get hit with it, you're kinda fucked. But immediately after that, me and my friends decided to put them down because that would be dangerous and irresponsible. So we wanted to be good role models. Yeah, that didn't happen. So things were actually going pretty well and we would stay parallel to each other so we wouldn't hit each other with these giant flying poles. But we started facing each other. What the fuck, why are we so stupid, what? So all of a sudden, Randy is facing right in front of me. So then I start talking, and I'm like, Hey Randy, remember to back up so we don't hit each other with these poles. So all of a sudden, Randy has just hit me with this high-speed flying projectile, right in the chest. The scary thing about this was I actually blacked out, and the last thing that I saw was a pole flying right towards my face, but luckily it hit me in the chest. In just a second, I went from standing to lying flat on my back, looking up at the sky. Everybody came rushing towards me to make sure I was okay. E except for Kelly, because he was playing with birds or something. So Randy rushes over and he grabs my hand. And he's like, Harold, are, are you okay? It was like a movie scene. I had a giant cut. There was blood everywhere and Randy was holding me. And it was like I was about to speak my final words. I could have said something really cool or dramatic, like maybe one of these. <sighs> Randy, yeah? <laughs> You've gotta... You've gotta protect the village. Randy... I need you to... Delete my internet history. Randy... Should we get pizza or burgers? Oh! Is it recording? What the fuck? Wait, what is this video about again? Oh yeah! So what I actually said after getting hit by the baton. Did it look cool? So let's start wrapping this up. Randy, Kelly, and Connor just look at me and they're like, Hey, the injuries aren't too bad. And then as soon as they say that, I start bleeding through my shirt. Yeah, you know what? It actually felt pretty cool. But then again, I got impaled in the chest with a dollar store badminton set, so maybe not. My mom starts shouting from the picnic table and she's wondering what all the noise is from. It was mostly my screaming. 
So naturally, I didn't want to worry my mom or dad, so I just told them I was fine. So yeah, now you know how I got the scar on my chest. So if you guys have any comments or questions, make sure to leave them down below. Or if you want to just share your own injury stories too, go for it. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to show your support. And oh yeah, remember to watch until the very end so you can hear the afterword too. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace! Hey guys, so just two quick notes. So the first thing is we are going to continue weekly uploading for now, so expect something by next weekend. And the second thing is I just want to say this is our first official story video. I'm still getting used to editing and drawing things, but yeah, it's been really fun and I hope to make a lot more for you guys. Um, so with that, I'll end it here and I will see you later. Johnette.